Hey guys, what is up? We're coming back to you with a brand new video on the Today's video is all about flashing a de-googled ROM called EOS. I promised this video to a Discord member, a friend of mine, and I wanted to, you know, finally get this taken care of. My licking my leg, this is very awkward. But I'm going to be flashing this ROM onto a OnePlus Nord N10 5G. So I figured let's get started. It's very easy to do. As you can see, I created my own. I created my own script, but before we run this script, let's go over what EOS is. So there are multiple types of ROMs. There are zip file ROMs, which flash with a custom recovery. There are OTAs and fastboot based ROMs. Um, that are just basically kind of like flashing them if you have a problem and you place into a brick. There are also GSI, which are generic system images, which are basically ROMs that work on almost any phone. So this might not work on this OnePlus, but I really want to run this ROM on my new phone. So I figured the worst that can happen is I have to go in and I just have to flash it back to stock. I haven't started using this phone yet, so it doesn't hurt anything if I suddenly flash a ROM to it and erase the whole thing because there's nothing to erase. I haven't used the phone yet. I wanted to do this from start to finish because it's a lot easier that way. But what is degoogling? What is EOS? So degoogling is basically when you take an Android ROM and remove all instances of Google from it. This is one of the older ver or one of the older operating systems that's out there for this option. Personally, I read OS. I think it's the cleanest one out there. But there's also Lee OS, L E O S. There's Alex OS and there's Graphene OS. So, you know, like they say, your phone is harvesting data all day and it transfers it back to Google or whoever else wants to get. So, this basically removes all that and they actually have their own app store built into the ROM where it gives a privacy rating for the app. So you know what you're getting yourself into. It's fantastic. I love it. They have a bunch of um, supported ROMs. As you can see, they're showing screenshots here. They have a bunch of... You can actually buy phones from them that are pre-flash, which don't really do that. This is really easy. Or you can download it yourself to one of their supported phones or one of the bunches of unofficial builds. But as you can see here, they do everything from the Asus phones to old Nexus phones. You know, they have Nexus 6 running Android Q. Like, that's amazing. Pixel 2 is running Android Oreo. They have these, some HTCs, Lenovo's, Motorola's, OnePlus's. Uh, all the way up to the 7, I'm actually surprised. The 6T is here as well, and I actually have one of those if I have this phone. So this is my backup plan. But it is Q-Beta, so it would probably go GSI instead. There's a whole bunch of stuff that they support, but you can actually just buy a phone from them. But don't do that. Buy your phone from me and tell me you want EOS on it. Or one of the other ROMs. So, with that, let's get to doing it. So, unfortunately I don't have the camera set up because I broke it. So you're not going to be able to see my phone screen until the very end here. But... I'll basically walk you through it as it's run script file. So get started. I already have OEM unlocking and USB debugging pulled on the phone. So we can just get started. So hit enter to begin. Rebooted to boot letter. Hit enter. Basically need to wait until it's there. So I'm at my bootloader. Hit enter. Did I not put enough pauses in here? I didn't put enough pauses. Hold up a sec. I really messed this up. <laughs> oh boy. 
All right, we back. Um, I got the phone phone booted up. We're gonna run this again. So it's rebooting the bootloader. Once I'm at the bootloader screen, that's when you. So I'm gonna enter. Now it's asking me if I want to lock the phone or basically use the volume buttons to select. I select unlock the bootloader. And once the bootloader is unlocked, it'll reboot to the bootloader screen. Oh, it's got to wipe my device first. That's right. If you flash bootloader or lock it, it will wipe the device, which, again, not a big deal. My device didn't have anything anyway. But we're going through these. Go. Come on. Oh, it's not booting to bootloader automatic. Okay. I'm gonna have to boot it myself to oh, I don't see it. So the other way is basically volume down and I have to do that. This phone is really I mean Snapdragon 695G. Not the greatest when I'm coming from a Razer phone that has a Snapdragon 845 in it. But that's okay. I'm just going to force it. Up, oh, it made a noise. Don't know why. I'm just going to force boot it because I don't feel like going through. Plug it in, put in the charger, hold volume down. Wait, because it tells me that the bootloader's unlocked. One pluses are a little different. That's okay. Just making sure it goes to the Okay, my bootloader is now unlocked. Hit enter. Yes. And it's rebooting to Fastboot D. Which I'm pretty sure this phone has. We'll find out here in a moment. I think this is D. Enter. So that did work. We're going to reboot it to Fastboot D again. Just to be safe. It's good to do reboot between certain types of times. Just to like clear out any cache, something like that. And now we're going to flash the system. In All right. And it actually fits on the system partition without any problems. So this is five parts. It's probably going to take a little bit. So I'm going to pause my recording until the uh, flash is done and I'll come back. All right. The ROM is installed. It went through the rest of my script. We're going to see if it boots. I'm not particularly sure it's going to boot, being that EOS is Android 10, and the lowest version ROM you can get on this phone is Android 11. From my experience with Google Pixel, I'm going to stop talking. I'm officially running Android 10. On a OnePlus Nord N10 cell phone. So, I'm going to do my quick setup real quick, and then I will go through and uh, do a screen share so you guys can see the screen, and I can explain EOS. Give me one second. All right, we got it running. So, let's talk about EOS. I think that's how you say it. Not 100%. So, moving away from Google, I think, is going to be a little bit difficult. Moving my contacts over, I can simply just export them to an SD card or the internal storage and drag and drop that D card file to this phone's internal storage. And then from there, I'll be able to import my contacts. That's not a big deal. 
So let's get started here, uh, starting with settings, because obviously that's a really important spot. So first of all, I don't like the brown. Hold up. I needed to make it darker, and I like my dark theme. Oh, there we go. I have all of that taken care of. I also will turn another certain function that I like to have. You guys can see exactly what I'm poking. Show taps. That's another function I really like having turned on phones. So let's go over EOS. EOS is fantastic. There are pH uh, trouble settings here. So you can actually go in and modify specific things. Like there are the OnePlus uh, features here, the high brightness mode I don't need. Enable USB OTG and DT2W. I don't know what that is, so I'll have to Google that. There are Qualcomm features like an alternative camera you can use. Doge features. I like to disable Doge. Uh, Doge. Doge. Until I've been talking about the coin too often. There's a lot of things you can do in here. Signal meter, whatever. I don't have that uh, enabled because I don't have my SIM card in here yet. Ah, oh, device disconnected. What? Hold up. I just noticed. I'm sorry. I don't know how much of that you missed. Um, but as you can see, there are all these features. Miscellaneous stuff. Disable audio effects. FPS. So if I use this, this phone does support 90 hertz refresh rate. So I'm not upset about being able to do that. The nice thing about Don't Force is it's just 30 FPS. You cannot do 30 FPS on a OnePlus Nord without a custom ROM. Other than that, I could go 60 a little smoother or I could go 90 and I don't know if that's going to transfer over over but yeah I can see the difference physically on my phone use linear screen brightness slider I don't actually know what that is. Does that mean I can use the notification bar uh, aux cameras that's cool Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here you can mess with. That's really nice. There are system updates, but I am running the most up-to-date secure version, so there's no reason for me to check those. There are all of your uh, different uh, thingies in here. You know, As you can tell, I have all my networks. Connected devices. I don't have anything paired up to this yet. Apps and notifications. There's not many apps and you might be thinking okay this is a degoogled phone why am i seeing a micro g services call? well they have to include google at least in some way and micro g is actually a custom solution that actually allows for um, the ability to enable or disable google services simply at a click so i might not be able to play pokemon go on this phone and that's going to be kind of a killer for me because I play a lot of Pokemon Go. But let's go under display. There's my dark theme, adaptive brightness, your standard stuff, styles and wallpapers. Yeah. I like dark themes, so I'm going to set my dark theme real quick. Anyway. You don't really need to go through all this stuff. I mean, I just wanted to show it to show it. There's your e-account and e-address book. As you can see, I made myself an email. Uh, e at e uh, techx at e dot email, which is awesome. I also have an address book in here I can start using, which I'll move my contacts over with that. But I might honestly do my contacts manually because there are a lot of people that I don't know who they are. And I don't want to send all those pointless contacts over if I don't talk to them. So... Let's go under uh, system settings. As you can see, there is the micro G section. Add a Google account, but then at the click of a button, you can just disable it. You can also straight up disable safety net. You can disable cloud messaging through Google. 
You can unregister the device with Google. You can still add an account if you want to. It's with the MicroG Services Core, so this actually isn't directly connected with Google uh, or something that's supported by Google. MicroG is actually completely different, and I'll pull up something about it so I actually get it right. One second. All right, I got it here. So as you can see, it's a free as in freedom re-implementation of Google's proprietary user space apps libraries. So basically it's a solution of adding all the Google stuff to your phone without them actually being able to basically track you, which is pretty nice. So let's get back to the phone here. So I have all that disabled. I can go back now. And in developer options, it's the standard same developer options. I'm going to enable uh, advanced restart because I like having the option to just go straight to whatchamacallit, um, recovery or bootloader just by my power menu. Standard reset. There's not much. I mean, to prove that I really am on my OnePlus. Oh, I shouldn't share my IME. Oops. Anyway, um, you can see I am on, you know, a BE2026, which is the unlocked version of a OnePlus Nord. It's awesome. I love this phone. Let's go through the App Store. So the App Store, I will show real quick. As you can see, it's a whole bunch of, like, apps from the Play Store, but they basically keep them up to date. So here's Signal. As you can see... Not only is there a user rating, but there's also a privacy rating. And what that means is a score out of 10, it's based on permissions and trackers that the app actually uses. And I'm actually surprised Signal doesn't get a 10 out of 10 just simply based on what it is. Like, what's WhatsApp get? 8 out of 10. I don't use WhatsApp. There is a ride sharing app. Okay. But that's like in pounds and stuff. So I don't think I'm, nor do I need to because I have cards. I love the game Go. I really need to relearn how to play. And even get your emulators off of here. Who would have thought SNES gets a perfect 9 out of 10 score? You know what I'm going to do real quick? We're going to download Pokemon Go's APK. Unless Pokemon Go is on here. I doubt it. Pokemon Go is on here. Zero out of ten privacy score. Oh. You know, a whole bunch of permissions. Their trackers are... Yeah, it uses pretty much everything. I'm going to download it. Because I do play Pokemon Go. I play it constantly, basically. What version is it? Is it the most up to date? No. All right, so that might be an issue if you're using this. Is this Pokemon Go is extremely out of date? The version that you actually want is. There's APK mirror, so that's what we need. We do not want 11 yet. We want 209. And we want the V8. We're going to download this real quick. We'll install it. And I got to wait for the timer because I have, an, I have all the stuff to, like, it. I need to also do some of my other setup. Where do I have all that? Universal setup. Oh, okay. And I know I can use something better than block ADA. I'm not thinking about using it. There are much better ways for me to. And this is going to download real quick. Real quick. I'm going to actually.
We're going to install all this. I wonder if you can do... Ooh, what did you find, computer? Detail. It's flagging Lucky Pacture. Huh. Interesting. It flagged Lucky Patcher. I'm just going to make sure it installed. Um, so far, Pokemon Go does work. Awesome. So I will be able to play on this phone, regardless of the issues overall with running a DQ phone. Well, actually, I should try to log in first. That's a big deal. So let me pause this recording real quick, and then I'll log in. And then we'll know if this works for sure. Because it's usually on login where they block you. I'll straight admit I forgot I was recording a video. Now we're on to the step of actually rooting my phone, because that's important. I need root. Uh, and it seems like I can't really do anything. Or I can't do my Pokemon Go wannabe shenanigans unless I root it with Magisk Manager. So, first of all, I got the uh, OTA file downloaded, and it's very simple to pull from. It's not. Everything I need is in here. Hold on a second. I need to learn how to pull from that. We're going to learn this together because this is for even the post on OTA that I'm So, you can download a tool called Payload Dumper or uh, Payload Dumper uh, .py. I need Python. I luckily already have Python. If I want to be drive, now what I do is Python mp install r text. And that should install all my requirements. Use this payload dump. Essentially. And then once you do that, simply just do, well, that's whatever. So now from there, payload uh, dot bin is almost extreme. About 20. So basically we just use this to extract. So that'll be Python load dumper py load dot in. And in a moment, I'll be able to run that code. So what the dot dot slash look back. So it'll know to look back in this folder even though we're located in the page. And I'm impatient. Go by faster, could it? David needs to be. Come on. Anytime now. Sweet. Done. Ah, crap. So now that that's done, we can run this. It's pulling the files that we need. As you can see, it's already pulled the boot file. And put it somewhere. Probably in here. Here it is. Oh. So really all we need. Oh, that is a big. So, so now that my payload file is extracted, I can go in and tell this thing to connect to my computer. File transfer will show up. So I can take this boot image, we put it on my internal store. And from here, I will use thing keeps disconnecting. Hold on a second. All right, so now I'm gonna move that boot.img over and I put it on here. So now we can actually go in, we can use Magisk to patch that boot image. The patch, file to patch. Internal storage is already enabled, so we simply here, select it, click let's go. 
it patches our boot image, and where it actually stores it is in your folder. So we can. Go to directory folder, specific, universal. So this is stuff. And we just take it off of my internal storage. Now that we're done with that, we can reboot the device. ADB reboot loader. I have to wait until this is at least done transferring. I have made that mistake before. And then had already wiped the system in it. Come on. I know it's really funny. Some people are going to make fun of me in the comments for OS on it. I have two Facebook tabs open. <laughs> anyway, so the uh, I can reboot to bootloader now. And once I'm in the bootloader, I can simply flash uh, boot partition. So it fast boot flash boot B B fast boot reboot. And we are rooted on Android 10 EOS degoogled ROM. I could relock the bootloader if I wanted to, but I have had that cause boot loops at random moments, and I have never figured out what those boot loops are caused by, but that's okay. Also, if you would like for me to upload this uh, payload.bin that's extracted, let me know in the XDA thread which I will put in the description as that has all the information about doing this flag. So I'm just waiting for it to boot because I want to make sure it boots before I actually like say that this is all running good. Probably not. Nope. I feel like this suddenly isn't going. I don't know why. Oh, there it goes. It was just slow. So, we will start up my screen, <coughs> excuse me, screen recorder real quick once more. I should just get more. And I will show you that I am officially rooted. EOS with Magisk. A little slow, and I'm not. Might be because I just. But as you can see, I can now come in and turn on my Wi Fi. Oh no. Connecting the Huh. It broke my Wi Fi. Well, my point still stands that this is how you flash a GS. But apparently I'm going to have to reach this I with the patched bootloader or the patched uh, system run. So, not a big deal. It happens. I can just do that. And I will make sure that fix. Just create a new quick flash. This is called dirty flashing if you do it this way. I mean, I am still erasing the system and fast, but this will work. Fast boot, reboot. 
very interesting that this is what broke my wallet. But anyway, my point still stands. This is how you flash a GSI. I'm going to just do it again real quick. And enjoy my device as it is. If this doesn't end up working, I'll figure out another way to root. But I'm guessing it's because I'm putting Android 10 on a, on a device that can. So I'm going to sit here and act. This is supposed to be perfect and work because I am putting an older Android OS onto a newer device that never had that OS. So there's bound to be bugs. But Android 11 GSI shouldn't have this issue. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something. This has been a fun experience for me. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.